Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss one of the most mind-blowing maps ever created by human beings and a map that essentially shows us some of the most fundamental properties when it comes to cosmology and the universe. We're going to be discussing the CMB or the Cosmic Microwave Background. But specifically in this video we're going to focus on one unusual quirk. Because after conducting some of the most precise measurements in cosmology, and especially measurements that show us how fast we're moving through the whole universe, researchers did actually identify something that doesn't make sense. There is something referred to as the cosmic microwave dipole, and the observational values don't seem to match predicted values. And so let's discuss some of these new studies that as always you can find in the description below and discuss what all of this means. But I guess let's start with the basics first. And maybe let's start with this in case you've never seen this before. And so when it comes to cosmology for many decades, Certain measurements, such as the measurements from the cosmic microwave background, served as a cornerstone for many different theories. And that's because this right here shows us the earliest light in the entire universe. When the universe was very young, approximately 300,000 years old, and when the whole universe was essentially just this scorching hot, very dense plasma, the light could not pass through it and was basically stuck inside. But eventually it cooled down just enough for a lot of electrons and protons to combine into atoms, in the process referred to as recombination, which essentially produced this ancient light because suddenly the entire universe became more or less transparent. But after billions and billions of years, the light stretched and cooled because of the expansion of the universe itself, and what used to be approximately 3000 Kelvin is now just 2.75 Kelvin, which is basically the background temperature in outer space. And so the cosmic microwave background, or the CMB, is literally just the faint glow of the microwave radiation that used to be the result of extremely hot plasma from all of the glowing matter in the first 300,000 years. And all of this light arrives to us from every single direction and has an incredibly uniform temperature from everywhere of exactly 2.725 Kelvin. Although, as we've discussed in one of the videos in the description, all of this was actually predicted a decade prior, and the discovery of this light was completely accidental and basically proved the Big Bang Theory. And while well, initially it was believed to be more or less uniform and more or less equal. As a matter of fact, the uniformity of the CMB is what seems to support most of the cosmological principles. Or the idea that even on the very large scales, the universe is pretty much homogeneous or pretty much the same in every direction. And it also isotropic or looks the same in every direction as well. But over the years, and especially in the last couple of decades, based on very precise observations from several telescopes, and you can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description, researchers realized that CMB was maybe not as uniform as we thought. And so if you take extremely precise observations, and if you start zooming in on certain parts of the map, you'll see very tiny variations or anisotropies. And the largest of such anisotropies is known as the CMB dipole. At the most extreme, it sort of looks like this. But this only shows us a difference of about 0.0035 Kelvin, which was surprisingly difficult to detect at first and was also very difficult to confirm. But this bizarre pattern seems to be consistent with motion. Or basically this unusual observation suggests that the planet Earth and very likely the Milky Way galaxy are moving in a certain direction. With some of the initial calculations suggesting that the entire local group of galaxies, including the Milky Way, seem to have an apparent motion of 600 km per second toward the constellation of Centaurus, or toward the location we refer to as the Great Attractor. Once again, the video in the description discusses this mystery as well. And so, for many years this was the simplest and the most accepted explanation, which confirmed a lot of things including Einsteinian principles when it comes to general relativity and the Doppler effects from motion, and of course the ideas behind CMB still being more or less uniform. And so just to rephrase this, here we had the confirmation that the universe is pretty much the same temperature in every direction and appears to be the same no matter where you look, but at the same time the Milky Way galaxy and planet Earth are actually moving pretty fast towards something in the constellation of Centaurus. And so this was just the result of the blue shifting and the red shifting. And once again, these measurements were super, super precise. Most of this was actually based on the observations from the Planck telescope that finished its mission just under a decade ago. And that means that for many decades, in order to try to figure out the exact values for the CMB, researchers had to mathematically remove the Doppler effects in order to discover the true primordial fluctuations or tiny temperature differences from the primordial universe. But this is where things get maybe just a little bit strange. 
because the CMB dipole itself presents a few quirks that have puzzled scientists for many years. And so here some of the simple explanations for motion don't seem to account for what we actually observe in the deep sky, with all this based on detailed studies looking at billions of galaxies, challenging fundamental assumptions, and especially assumptions that the universe is the same everywhere. And so let's talk about some of these new discoveries and what researchers believe is happening. Now first, there's a kind of a historical debate about the alignment. Here several major probes, including Kobe, W, Mapp, and Planck, have all pretty much confirmed the dipole pattern. But in some of the studies, for some strange reason, scientists have also discovered that this dipole seems to be unusually aligned with the Earth's equator and the equinoxes. And a lot of researchers found this alignment to be very puzzling. Mostly because it's kind of difficult to imagine a physical correlation between the cosmic microwave background and the physical coordinate system right here on planet Earth. And so, in other words, why should equinox points, or the Earth's rotation, have any bearing on the large-scale distribution of matter in the universe? And so this led to certain speculations, including the fact that maybe this pattern is not actually due to local motion, but is some kind of an intrinsic value. But that was just the first quirk that was very difficult to explain, and actually still does not have an explanation. A much more significant recent development relates to something even more confusing. It doesn't relate to the temperature of the dipole, but to the radio source counts that seem to contain multiple components and seem to create additional problems. And well, here let's I guess discuss what this means. And so in the standard cosmological model, if this dipole is derived from the CMB motion or from the motion of the Milky Way, it should be consistent with the dipole observed when counting the number of distant astronomical objects, for example, radio galaxies. In other words, we should be seeing maybe something similar in terms of the redshift and blue shift when looking at various radio galaxies super far away. Or to be more specific, when looking at the region we're moving toward, we should actually be seeing more sources as a result of the phenomenon referred to as the Doppler boosting. And we should be seeing less sources on the other side. But a lot of different surveys using catalogs of radio sources have consistently detected a dipole that is inconsistent with the size of the velocity inferred from the cosmic microwave dipole. In other words, when it comes to radio galaxies, that motion of 600 km per second did not really match at all. And this is a huge inconsistency, with a lot of recent deep sky studies only amplifying the tension. And so in this 2025 analysis, that combined data from several massive radio continuum surveys, which actually includes surveys such as NVSS, RexLow, and LOTS DR2, which collectively cover an enormous part of the night skies, and a study where researchers developed a robust statistical tool in order to accurately account for radio sources and their clustering, scientists once again confirmed something that just didn't make sense. The observed source count exceeded expected value if we just considered the effects from relative motion. And here it was exceeded by a factor of 3.67, or when it comes to significance value, sigma of 5.4, which in physics usually implies that there is definitely something going on here. It's extremely unlikely to be by chance. So to put it in simple terms, it means that there is an incredibly low probability that the observations are just random fluctuations, and this is a highly significant detection. Although intriguingly, even though the actual values don't add up, the direction still seems to be about the same. And so essentially, despite the difference in amplitude, the direction of the dipole remains consistent with the same values from the CMB observations. And this, of course, has some really bizarre implications. Now, first of all, this new study, assuming it's confirmed, presents a relatively serious challenge for the standard model of cosmology. Here, the findings suggest that the dipole amplitude measured in the CMB frame and the one measured from distant radio sources seem to completely not match, implying a physical inconsistency. And I guess second of all, it also implies that, for some reason, according to these observations, the inferred motion of the Milky Way across the universe appears to be much, much faster when using radio sources instead of the CMB. And so, is this an actual observation, or is there some kind of a bias going on, or basically are we just confusing certain measurements? And well, this is actually one of the first potential explanations in the study. A lot of these large-scale radio surveys may still contain unaccounted systematic errors, preventing them from achieving precise measurements for some of these galaxies. Although in this case, it's very unlikely that all of these surveys would contain the same mistakes, especially across all radio frequencies, or that they would also mimic results from infrared observations of various quasars. 
And so even though bias is possible, right now it's extremely unlikely. Likewise, this Excel dipole could be caused by some kind of a unusual bulk flow, or basically a large-scale motion of matter that seems to extend way beyond the current Lambda CDM cosmological expectations. So for example, maybe we're just seeing the motion in the cosmic web, but in this case, all of this motion and all of the galaxies and matter are moving much, much faster than predicted. And if so, this does create a bit of a problem for a lot of modern theories. Or maybe, for some reason, the matter is moving in an entirely different way, and so even though the bulk motion of matter may explain the observations, we would not explain why this is happening. Or, I guess the most unnerving explanation for cosmologists is the fact that maybe the universe is not isotropic after all. Or just to rephrase this, it's not the same in every direction. Maybe distant parts of the universe are just slightly different. And this is, of course, a huge challenge to the cosmological principles and may cause serious issues for cosmology because many different propositions today depend on the universe to be the same everywhere. And so here the question of this dipole remains relatively open. It seems to be there, but we just don't really know what's causing it. Which means that we need bigger and more accurate surveys to try to figure out what's going on. But in essence, at least based on this recent study, we now have these two somewhat opposing fundamental measurements of the universe. And they seem to tell us two different stories about the motion of the Milky Way. The cosmic microwave background suggests a precise velocity that even defines the universal rest frame, but the observations from distant radio galaxies suggest motion that's several factors larger, and it's not entirely clear why. Which means that we're going to be re-examining some of these models, and of course re-examining potential explanations for many years to come. But this is definitely an exciting discovery, and may help us explain additional mysteries, including the mysteries of the expansion of the universe, and why some things there don't end up as well. As a matter of fact, if this dipole is the reason why Hubble tension exists, this might explain so much. But essentially, we now once again find ourselves at the frontiers of these very bizarre discoveries. We're trying to understand why things are the way they are, but we cannot seem to get the exact answer. Which means that we'll come back and discuss this more in some of the videos in the future. Until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and can DM me directly, or by joining channel membership that grants you early access and a few more videos. Additionally, you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.